what you see here today is part of his labor these many years around the world. Preaching the gospel around the world. He preached when it was difficult to preach in many countries. With the boldness of the Spirit, he moved into those nations. And thank God for what we have today. And he's going to be speaking on Sunday. So I can assure you something very special will be deposited in your life. Praise God. And before I introduce our main speaker tonight, I have some things to tell you. Are you ready? Sit down for a second. I heard Pastor Amando Sorio share earlier on with us some really powerful truths. And one of those areas that really got my attention, because he said many beautiful things. When Jesus said, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, that your faith fail not. And I was thinking, I said, Lord Jesus, you know, I, I've read that many times, but I said, why did you have to pray for Simon? And to God, why did you have to pray for Simon? Why didn't you just change him? standing there? Why are you standing there? Okay, sit down for a second. All right? So you'll be fine. When we start singing, you'll be back there, right? Thank you. Thank you. So, I said, why did you have to pray? For Simon, Simon Peter. Why would Jesus have to pray for him? He said, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. But I've prayed for you. Why didn't he just prophesy to him and say, Your faith will not fail? He didn't do that. He said, I prayed for you. I prayed for you. And when you pray, you pray in hope. When you pray for someone, when you pray for someone else, you can only pray in hope. So Jesus prayed in hope. That I prayed for you. That your faith fail not. He prayed in hope. You 
know, as pastors, ministers, many of us would have experienced that reality. <coughs> or have to intercede for someone or for several in the church to just get them over to the place where we believe they ought to be. How much longer should we do it? How important is it? That ingredient of mindful, deep prayer of intercession for others, not only for, for the lost, but also for one who's already in the Lord, but maybe going astray. How often do we take that responsibility to pray? If the master would do that for Simon, to say, I prayed for you that your faith fail not. Do we pray for others that their faith fail not? Or do we watch them go down? You know, this is a special conference on the evangelization of the world. By the time we finish on Sunday, you will know, you will know surely that we have taken this world. Because things are changing really fast. In something Dr. Cyril says, all truth is parallel. I've never forgotten it. I, I, I don't know whether he will get to tell you how he came about it, but it, it's so special and so important. But you see, uh, by that very law, because I, I think it's a law, it's a spiritual law, what has happened in our world when we see the development of technology and all that's going on? We have to look in the spirit and see a parallel but for good and evil because there's a lot of good in our world and there's a lot of evil in our world in the spirit it's the same thing same thing something is happening in our world satan is not winning he's not winning Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall prevail. not prevail yeah. against it. So Satan shall not prevail. He is not winning. We are winning. And from this place, you know, the Bible says he gave some apostles and some prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. All right? The equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. One of the things that you would take from here 
uh, let's call it a sort of updating of your of your message. Did you hear me? An update. Very important. And sometimes you have a, a hardware update, but frequently you get software updates. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So you're going to have an update. Because without that update of your message, you can't go very far. You have to know what is the mind of the Spirit now? What is the Lord thinking? For example, for example, when you study in the sixth chapter of the book of Exodus, God spoke to Moses. He says, Moses, he said to him, my name is Jehovah. Now, nobody ever heard that before. He says, I am Jehovah. He says, but I appeared unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, by the name of El Shaddai. But by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. That means there's a change in Revelation. So Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob knew God as El Shaddai. God said they didn't know me as Jehovah, but I am Jehovah. A new introduction. So he says, and by my name, Jehovah, I will bring Israel out of Egypt. Because the revelation of El Shaddai will not bring them out of Egypt. They will need the revelation of Jehovah. Who is he? Who is Jehovah? A change. A change. Why did he reveal himself to them in several different names in the Old Testament? Why did he do it? Why did he do it? Moses said, what is your name? Who shall I say sent me? He didn't tell him his name. He said, tell them I am has sent you. I am is not his name. I am is a revelation. He's revealing himself to Moses, but I am is not a name. Moses gets an understanding of God that others around him didn't have. With this new understanding, he's armed and ready to go. Revelation is important. You cannot live a life that is higher than the revelation of God that you have. Your daily life is the outworking, the expression of God's revelation that you have. Are you hearing? Yes. You cannot live beyond the revelation you have. Who is he to you? What do you know him to be? He said to Martha, resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. Praise God. And so this couple of days God's word will come to you in a way that you never knew before. Yes. There's something about the Word of God that's different from the letters, that's different from the sound. Something about the Word. Remember, the Word is God. So when the Word comes to you, God comes to you. 
Hallelujah. That's the transformation. And, and this is what's going to change our world. When we realize that God has spoken. And we are the manifestation and the expression of his message. We are not just messengers. We are his message. Hallelujah. So I'm excited about what, what's about to happen and uh, really, really looking forward to uh, sharing these thoughts with you. Hallelujah. Amen. But you know, for the last 40 years, this world has been bombarded, bombarded by the Holy Ghost, bombarded by the Holy Ghost. I said, 40 years, Satan has had a big challenge. Confused, not knowing to do, because of one gentleman, very gentle, until he's doing something by the Holy Ghost speaking praying whatever it is then he's not so gentle in the last 40 years here is pastor benny hien who the lord has used in a mighty way You know, all around the world, many can tell you how they've been blessed by you. But you may not know that you were more than a preacher to many of us around the world. More than a preacher. You were a symbol. And God sent you to bless, not only with the word of him, but as a symbol, just to let our world know Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. I want to thank you personally for the message of the Holy Spirit that you have taken around the world. You've helped our world to know, especially this church of this generation, to know there's a spirit in man. Thank you, Pastor Benny. And thank you for blessing me in a very special way. I love you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And can we welcome Pastor Benny? Thank you, Pastor Chris. And I want the world to know I love this man of God. We are closer than you know. That's a fact. And tonight, what a blessing to have Dr. Sorello with us. And he, I'm telling you, God's going to use this man mightily on Sunday. I'm, I'm so blessed to see you tonight. I thought you would come Sunday only. But I'm glad you're with me. And Pastor Chris, we love you very much. The people of God love you very much. And what a blessing to have pastors from 170 countries here. Can, can we see your, your hands up? 
all the pastors that came from all those nations. That's incredible. Thank you for the privilege. Love you so much. Let's give our wonderful Lord Jesus a big hand of praise. And you know, you know why we're all here? Because we love him. Because he is the love of our hearts. Not only the lover of our souls, he's the love of our life. Without him, life has no meaning. Yes. Come on, lift your hands to heaven. Oh Lord my God. When I lost a wonder, consider all the worlds thy hands have made. When I see the stars, I
Give me your love. For you. For you. I've never had. I've never had. In this conference. In this conference. Baptize me. Baptize me. With a fresh baptism. With a fresh baptism. Of love. Of love. For you, Lord. For you, Lord. Only for you. Only for you. Now, before you take your seats, lift your hands. Now. Glory to the Lamb of God. Just see Him at God's right hand. Your Redeemer. Your Savior. The one who died for you. The one who rose from the dead. Live forever. His mighty presence is in this arena.
make your words so powerful, so penetrating into our hearts. Help me deliver it as you want. In your holy name. Amen. And God's people said, Amen. 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 Can we give the Lord a mighty hand one more time? Please be seated.